Hello everybody, hope you guys are enjoying your day. Today we're going to be looking at your potential next hurricane, which would be your I-named storm. It's currently Invest 92L, and it is off the shore of Africa, uh, and it is going to be making its way throughout the Gulf uh, and the Caribbean, and it's going to be making its way potentially up the East Coast. We could potentially have another tropical storm, Faye, but potentially even stronger if this does uh, stay as it looks like it will, uh, as it looks like it will play out, uh, according to some of these models. We're going to be going over to that, as well as Tropical Storm Hannah just give you a quick brief update on that now I also do want to apologize for any of you guys who uh, were on the stream today I did try to live stream but there were some technical difficulties so unfortunately I was not able to do that but I might try again uh, in uh, a, on a later date I'll let you guys know if I do do that so here is your current National uh, Weather Service page we have uh, heat advisories and excessive heat warnings for parts of the northern plains flood watches for parts of the central united states and also for parts of arizona and texas due to some monsoon showers and then we have some heat advisories also for the pacific northwest and some tropical storm warnings hurricane warnings and storm surge warnings in effect for parts of southeastern texas there other than that we do have uh no other watches or warnings now here is your current five-day graphical outlook from the Na the National Hurricane Center. They have a 20% chance of develop of this uh, system developing within the next 20 uh, within the next 48 hours and within the next five days, 70% chance. Gonzalo, uh, Tropical Depression Gonzalo, is right down here north of South America and south of the Lesser Antilles. Uh, and then we have uh, Hurricane Hannah, uh, which is just east of uh, southernmost uh, Texas there, and it's about to make landfall uh, within the next couple of hours, or maybe within this hour that I'm recording it. It is getting very, very close, uh, and it is still strengthening, believe it or not. Uh, it's a very, very interesting storm. Now, uh, here's Douglas. Nothing for the Eastern Pacific, if you're curious. No uh, areas that they are pointing out to watch, but we, have, we do have Major Hurricane Douglas at its peak. It was a uh, Category 4, uh, but I believe right now it is a Category Category 2 about to become a Category 1 as it starts to, uh, to impact parts of Hawaii. Now, here is uh, tropical, uh, tropical Depression uh, uh, Gonzalo here and uh, the Cone of Uncertainty for it. I just want to quickly go over this. It is expected to become a Tropical Depression and then eventually a post-tropical storm uh, as it starts to head further west and that would most likely happen around Sunday morning or Saturday night. It is a very very uh, this is one of the storms that we were expecting to become some sort of uh, tropical storm, stays a high end tropical storm or even maybe become a hurricane but just because of all the circumstances that occurred with the storm, uh, really the, uh, the pretty much the best case scenario uh, for the storm it actually became uh, it actually encountered a large area of wind shear and some dust as well and that ended up uh, ended up uh, uh, bring it down to a tropical depression now here is tropical uh, or Hurricane Hannah, uh, and you can see that tropical storm wind extent that does actually go onshore now. We do have a little area of hurricane force wind speeds, and it is expected to stay as a hurricane until about uh, sometime right around midnight. And then uh, as it starts to head inland, it'll slowly go from a tropical storm to a tropical depression, and then eventually a post-tropical storm. You do see where those hurricane warnings are in effect, uh, and that's for uh, southern Texas as well. Uh, on either side of that, we do have some tropical storm warnings in an, in effect so here is your past uh, observed wind speeds for this we did have a large area of tropical storm force wind speeds and another area of uh, hurricane force wind speeds now here is your key messages for hand and I'm actually gonna go read these out real quick now here is your first one they say life-threatening storm surge is, occur uh, is occurring along portions of the Texas coast from Port Mansfield to Sargent where a storm surge warning is in effect residents in these locations should follow advice given by local emergency officials. Number two, they say hurricane conditions are expected along the Texas coast from Port Mansfield to Mesquite Bay, where a hurricane warning is in effect. Tropical storm conditions are expected to first reach the coast within the warning area this morning. And then number three, they say Hannah is expected to produce heavy rains across portions of southern Texas and northeastern Mexico. These rains could result in life-threatening flash flooding and isolated minor to moderate rivers. 
river flooding. Now, here is your storm surge map from the National Hurricane Center. We have a maximum of four to six feet right around poor R and SAS, and uh, we also have on either side of that we have a two to four foot uh, area of storm surge, and then on either side of that we have one to about three feet of storm surge. Now, here is your uh, flash flooding risk, and we do have a high risk uh, over today and going into uh, day two and even into day three. We still have a lingering shot. Now, here is your rainfall forecast for uh, this storm, and we do have a little area of 10 to 15 inches of potential rainfall. Uh, this is not going to be one of those slow moving storms. It is a slow moving storm, but it's not going to be as slow moving as, say, Harvey, where it just uh, sat there and kind of dumped rain uh, and you saw about 50 inches. It's not going to be anything like that. It's going to move along and it should be fairly quick. It should be mainly a one day event, about a 24 hour event where you're going to get your winds and your rain and then it'll be all said and done with. Now, here is your model guidance for Hannah, and you see most of them, again, impacting southern uh, most Texas there. Here is your tropical storm force winds uh, and uh, uh, the percent chance of that occurring. We have pretty much 100% chance of that occurring, and most likely they will arrive by about Saturday uh, or today. Uh, pretty much right now is when they should be occurring. Now, here is your 58 mile per hour wind speed probabilities and uh, the chances that, th that you see those. And we do actually have an area that is onshore of about 80 to 90 percent chance and then here's your hurricane force wind speed probabilities which i think should be closer to 50 to 60 percent uh and we well the national hurricane center has put it at a 30 to 40 percent chance and that is also inland uh so we do have the chance of seeing some hurricane force wind speeds now here's your model intensity guidance for this and it's a actually a fairly high-end category one uh and we at some point we were out almost looking at a category two uh hur hurricane uh, uh, but it did weaken a little bit, uh, and now as it starts to head into Texas, it is going to weaken dramatically. Now, here is your observations and your aircraft recon. We did see on the left left-hand side, you can see where they actually found those wind speeds on a map, and they actually, anywhere in those uh, purples, that's where you're seeing hurricane force wind speeds, and you actually do see a swath on either side, and that is something that we haven't seen in any of these hurricanes pretty much this year, is uh, having, uh, having sustained winds of of, uh, were of fairly high magnitude on all sides. Uh, we have seen it sometimes just on the eastern side, sometimes on the southern side, but we haven't seen it all around the storm, and we actually did see a closed low pressure system from this storm, so definitely something interesting, uh, and also the uh, surface wind speeds are about 80 uh, knots, which is almost category 2 uh, strength. Now, Let's start talking about uh, Invest 92L, which is your area that you saw on the thumbnail, which could potentially reach that strength. Now, the image on the thumbnail was the surface wind speeds, so that is definitely something very interesting. And I also saw that on multiple models uh, that they had the pretty much the same area uh, or like the, the same uh, general location uh, with a, a similar wind speed value uh, that is very, very high, close to Category 1 strength or even closer to Category 2 strength, and we'll have to see about that. Here's where the low pressure system is, uh, around 11 degrees north by about uh, 30 degrees west. Now, here is your model track guidance, and it looks to go north of the Caribbean islands uh, over the next few days. That would be your seven-day track. Now, here is your GEFS ensembles, uh, your G GFS uh, ensemble models, your uh, American models, and you do, you do see that they have a fairly strong storm heading up the east coast. Pretty much all these storms, uh, or, or all these models, have it heading up the east coast. Now, here is your Canadian ensemble models, and I really don't like to use them too much, but I always show them just because uh, it is another scenario that we have to take into account. Uh, but they have it on uh, two models into the Gulf, two models into the uh, t into the East Coast. We'll have to see about that, but this is why I'm actually saying it's probably going to be uh, maybe a, a Tropical Storm Fay part two, uh, but I think it will be more, uh, it'll probably curve further out to sea, and I don't think you'll see uh, as great impacts. We'll still have to see, and it is still uh, quite a ways out, so uh, definitely a lot still can change. Here's your intensity guidance, and you see most of these models, uh, well, all of these models currently have it at least as a tropical storm, so 
I'm pretty um, pretty much certain that within the next about 24 to 72 hours, we are going to have our next named storm, which would be the fastest we've ever reached. The I named storm, I believe it would be Isaiah, uh, if this were to get named. And you see, uh, half of these models actually bring this to a Category 1, or one of these models actually touching the Category 2 line. And you see, all of these models are still curving upwards. So if they were to go farther out, you would most likely see them strengthen even more. Now, let's start looking at your models and then we're going to look at some of the em environmental conditions and what they're showing now also something i have to uh, i want to kind of uh, mention we do have some sort of disturbance that's over the northern bahamas and that could potentially i i really don't think it's going to occur but I wouldn't be surprised if the National Hurricane Center actually outlines a little area uh, for that to uh, to watch or a little area of disturbed weather uh, because we do have a decent shot of seeing some sort of tropical depression force wind speeds, uh, not a high chance of seeing tropical storm wind speeds, but about a 20 to 30 percent chance. And then also the European ensemble models wants, uh, want to kind of bring a low pressure system from over uh, the, cent the center of the country and then bring it offshore and then redevelop it into some sort of tropical low we'll have to see about that and again that could be potentially uh even uh even more named storms uh and it's definitely been a very active season we'll have to see if it continues uh to stay as an active season so you see that's our invest 92l a fairly good shot of seeing those tropical depression uh wind speeds uh close to 90 percent chance as we continue to start to see it moves throughout the southern caribbean and then uh the this is when the european ensemble models they kind of diverge uh i would say about uh a quarter of the models bring it to the Gulf of Mexico. The other, uh, uh, the uh, the rest of these models bring it uh, north uh, and into parts of the East Coast. Also, note we do have another uh, tro uh, uh, tropical wave moving off the African coast. Uh, this would be by uh, the first day of August, so we'll have to see about that. And I'll definitely make a video about that. Here is that uh, potential next low pressure system that could become another uh, tropical storm or tropical entity. We'll have to see about that. Uh, that's off the East Coast. I'm not too certain on that. Uh, but I did look at the cu a couple of these models and they did show at least tropical depression wind speeds I didn't see uh, a single model that brought it to tropical storm force winds But we'll have to see about that. There's a lot that still is undecided uh, Currently now you start to see this storm starts to move up the East Coast uh, Right around here uh, and and you have some fairly decent shots of seeing tropical depression wind speeds And then it moves even further to the north as we get further on in time now let's start looking at your uh, conditions and we do have very very, very warm waters and that would definitely support a uh, hurricane or tropical storm whatever this uh, ends up being now here is your ocean heat content uh, and we do have some decent ocean heat content throughout this area uh, and generally it looks like it will track within this region right here so we do have a decent uh, amount of ocean heat content it's nothing that's too extraordinary uh, but it's definitely something that's interesting and we do have uh, a decent amount of it that it could support some sort of tropical system and then finally something that's on the negative side or on the cons we have some uh, dust that's going to move through this area that'll uh, represent sinking air and that will also help weaken this system so uh, that kind of wraps it up for today's video I hope you guys did all enjoy the video and I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye